Well, back on Eyewitness News, as we continue to follow the historic funeral of Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI, led by his successor, Pope Francis. And you see the pallbearers there carrying the coffin of former Pope Benedict away at the end of his funeral mass. This was a short time ago. The sound of bells tolling. There was also a wave of applause erupting there in St. Peter's Square with the crowd shouting, Santo Subito, which is a phrase that means Saint Now in Italian. We just got word the remains of Pope Benedict XVI, the first pope to resign in six centuries, have just been buried in a tomb in the Vatican Grotto. That's right. And joining us now to share some of her perspective and personal experience covering the Vatican for decades, former <laughs> CBS3 anchor Pat Shiraki. Thanks, Pat, Janelle. so glad to have you with us to share your perspective about this. This was truly a historic morning. Yeah, and it was really wonderful to be back in the newsroom watching all of this. The last time I covered a papal funeral was actually at the Vatican with John Paul II. And I had witnessed that. We had witnessed that chant, Santo Subito, Santo Subito, that had started in the back of St. Peter's Square and worked its way all the way up to the altar where then Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger, who became Pope Benedict, was celebrating the Mass for John Paul II. And so here we have a reflection of the same moment where they're calling for him to be named, Benedict to be named a pope. Um, but a very, very very different ceremony. This was much shorter than yes. the last. Yeah, yeah. It was. It was. And because actually Pope Benedict wanted it to be simple. I mean, even though it's really hard to be simple at a papal funeral mm -hmm. because there are clerics from around the world who were there. Uh, the two U.S. cardinals who came to be part of it, um, New York's Cardinal Dolan, Timothy Dolan, and then from Boston, Sean O'Malley, Cardinal Sean on O'Malley. Um, they were the only ones, the only U.S. cardinals, from what I understand, who participated, but both of them very, uh, very influential in the church. Tell us about the coffin. It seemed to be very simple. Yes, it, well, it, it was a, a cypress initially, like the, it's a triple coffin. So the first coffin was cypress, the second zinc, which is then sealed, and then the third one, which everyone could see, was the wooden coffin. Uh, and the book that was on top of that wooden coffin was a book of the Gospels. Here, a really moving moment when Pope Francis got up from his wheelchair, had a little help, had his cane, but went over to say one final farewell to the man who became his friend, who was uh, essentially his neighbor right, on, there at the, on Vatican. the Vatican grounds. And here, you know, we see the, these are called the, the papal gentlemen carrying the, uh, the coffin into St. Peter's Basilica was going to go down into the grotto, into the same crypt where John Paul II was buried initially. And then when he moved into uh, his point of canonization and right before that, they actually moved his body up into the upper basilica so that people would have the ability to be able to venerate it. You don't pray to a pope, you venerate the remains of a pope. Yesterday we reported that there was a, a paper that was placed inside the coffin. Yes. You said it was a scroll? Yeah, it was, it was a scroll. It's a one-page accounting of the, uh, the papacy of Benedict. And um, th there's a, a lot, from what I understand, it was listed on it. It was put into a metal canister. It was buried, sealed, and then buried with him um, in the coffin. And also there were some yeah. Vatican coins. And I mean, I, I hate to use the term memorabilia, mm -hmm. but... Uh, symbols of that time of his papacy, which was nearly eight years until he resigned in 2013. Um, but on that scroll was also listed where that he had called for penance and purification in the church. He had disciplined and defrocked more priests who were credibly accused of sexual abuse, and he called them crimes committed by the clergy against minors and the most vulnerable. And he was criticized at different times for not doing enough, but he in fact did more than John Paul II had actually done. Historic really day. to get that perspective. Yeah. Yes, on this historic day. And it's been great to have you, Pat, as Thank part you. of our coverage uh, and sharing your perspective as well. We appreciate right? it, you. my friend. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be back at uh, 9 o'clock on the 9 o'clock. Wonderful. Show. See you in a few hours.